Okay, so now this video is all about the game logic. So uh, when we press that button we made in the last one, we want it to drive the game. So the first thing which we never added earlier on is an actual random number that you can try and guess. So if we do that, let's call it um, comp dump. And we're going to make that equal random, which we imported dot random. And we're going to say somewhere between 1 and 100. We can change this later. But for now, pick a random number between 1 and 100. So then we scroll right down. Inside this method here, which is when I press my button, what do I want to do? We need to develop our game logic. So the first thing to check is probably um, whether the users are as entered anything. You can, if you want to use it in a variable form so they keep getting it, because we're probably going to use it quite a lot in the logic. At this point when the button's clicked, you probably want to get the value of whatever the user's put in that box. So we could say, um, user guess equals self dot user text box, is what I called it, at dot text. So what that means is that variable will become whatever they've put in that text box. So once we've got that, as a mini bit of validation, one thing you might want to do is say, um, if user guess is equal to, or is not equal to blank. And by doing this, it, this code here will only run if they've put something in that box. Now it's not very advanced, it's not checking that they've only put numbers in, you might want to do all that sort of stuff to make it better, but it's something. So what this means is it'll effectively mean the button isn't doing anything, if, um, or it'll feel to the user like it's not doing anything, if they don't put something in that box. So if they do put something in, let's just assume for now it's a number, because it will break our code, um, but you could use like you know you can do is normally is alpha and stuff like that I've shown you in previous videos but i don't want to go down the rabbit hole of doing more than we need to um so let's assume they've typed in a number and they've pressed the button so we're now inside this if statement so then we might want to say if the int of that because it's going to pull it as a string so if the int of user guess is equal to comp num so if they've guessed the right number what do you want to do well you might want to hide elements that might have previously been on show so if we go through our different elements that might have popped up like the higher or lower arrows might have been popping up so we might want to hide those so um, if we do self dot lower uh, let me just check what we called it down arrow, up arrow and down arrow. Self dot, I was gonna say, I didn't see it in that list. There it is, down arrow, um, dot hide. Might wanna also hide the up arrow. Um, we might wanna hide the text box, because you don't need that anymore. We definitely want to hide the text, the guest button. Um, we had text one and two, so let's hide one or we'll repaint the other. So text two, can't remember which way around they were, but it doesn't matter. Hide. Um, so for the other one, if I've got this the wrong way around, you can change it, but you get the idea. So one of them I'm going to hide, the other one I'm going to change the value of it. So I'm going to say set text, and I'm going to say it becomes a winner. And then to actually see that, I need to repaint it. So uh, text one dot repaint. So that's going to hide all the stuff that's not really relevant anymore because you've just won the game. It's going to and display a message winner somewhere. Text one might have been the bit that was higher up, but Regardless, it's going to set one of the text values to a winner. Now, we might want to then um, set the 
the question mark. Do you remember we put the question mark in the uh, computer? I think we call it combinom or something. Uh, it was above the up arrow. Yeah, comp number we had as a question mark inside that green box. So we probably want that to become the actual number you've just guessed because you know you don't want to just say winner, you want to remind what the winning number was. So we could do that by saying self dot comp num dot set text. And we can set it to a string of a either comp num or user guess. Um, it doesn't really matter what, but it's either because they're both the same, aren't they? Because if it's got in here, they're both the same. So set it to one of those and then uh, do repaint again. Okay, now this is difficult to test at the minute um, because we've got, this will technically be running, but you should really test as you go along. But with a number of one to 100, this is gonna take ages. So I'm gonna say, pick a random number between one and three. And then if I test this out, so one, two, two. So it changes to that. I could obviously set make that text bigger and stuff like that if I wanted. Um, so you can change, set the style sheet differently and things like that. But that's sort of our winning window. So now we need to say, you know, if we get it wrong, what do we want to see? So if they're not the same, they're going to either be higher or lower. So let's check one. So we could say elif uh, an int of user guess. Um, is less than comp num. So if the user's guessed less than the computer number, then we need to say higher um, because they need to, the next guess needs to be higher. Um, so let's start by, because we don't know what arrows are on the screen at the time, because we don't know how many guesses they've had. Let's start by hiding lower, hiding the down arrow. Self dot hide, self dot down arrow dot hide. So let's hide the down arrow because it might have been appeared. Um, let's set some text. So let's say self dot text one um, dot set text, and let's say uh, something like um, the computer's number was higher. The computer's the computer's number is not is. Uh, not what is is higher okay that's going to work so then say um self dot text one dot repaint and self dot uh, up arrow dot show so we want the up arrow to appear and we want the, um, the this message to change. So again, let's test that out. So you can see it's obviously two or three in our example. So the up arrow has appeared. It says the computer's number is higher. So you can probably guess what's coming next and then we're nearly done. So if we change this, and we don't need this argument anymore. We can change this to an else because if it's not the same, it's not lower, it must be this. Obviously, unless they've entered text, not numbers, but we, we won't get into that. Um, so we need to change this around. So we need to hide the up arrow and show the down arrow. And we need to say it's lower. Um, and that should be it. So if we go up here and set this number to 100, um, we could, we could, I'm not going to do 999, but we could do that because we've got a three digit limit. So, let's make this a bit bigger, although it looks a little bit more odd when you do that because of the size of the images. Let's leave it, actually, let's leave it as it was. So let's test it out. So obviously if it's between 1 and 100, I should be guessing 50 first time round. Okay, it's higher, so then I should guess 75 still higher um 90 still higher than 90 
95, all lower, 93. Well, we know it's 94 then. We've got it. So I guess the number game is working and we've got a nice user interface that's driving and running the whole thing. So hopefully um, this little mini project has is, is gotten you into a little bit of OOP um, a little bit of the basics of PyQT. Um, there is no expectation to use OOP. I've seen people make uh, PyQT uh, stuff just with, with functions and just, just in a, a sort of linear mode where the buttons are driving different functions. You don't have to have it as its own object. It's just as your projects become bigger, uh, which obviously some A-level projects might, um, having different windows in different areas that are importing and modularizing your code properly might actually make it a lot easier because it will become uh, potentially quite a beast as the projects get harder. So it's, it's a good habit to be in. Um, so that's this. I'm going to do a slightly more complex project in uh, we'll do Wordle. Um, and then I'll think of something harder to do after that. And I'll try and do one every, every few weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm.